You're listening to Run, Are You Win? Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. As pastor of the Smithton Outpouring and the Kansas City Revival, Steve is a leading voice of revival worldwide. Steve shares his life-changing encounters with God, along with biblical teaching that equips you to experience and lead lasting revival. Come, run with Steve and expect God to revive us now. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to Revive Us Now podcast. I am your host, Steve Gray, and we're going to talk again about personal revival or getting into the victorious living, victorious life, uh, lifestyle. And especially today, we're going to talk about what do you do when you kind of get into a hard spot a difficult spot, whether it's uh, you're spiritually not feeling like you're where you need to be and you don't know what to do. <clears throat> but usually I see people, they get into a spot, maybe uh, finances aren't what they need to be or a relationship's not what it need to be and you're just feeling down about it, you're depressed about it or, uh, you know, not feeling good about something or just not, things are just not going the way you want them to. And you're just kind of noticing it, feeling it, and you you don't, you know, you kind of feel like, I don't know what to do about it. It seems like I can pray about it, but what do I do after I say the amen? And so I've been in that situation before. And let me just tell you what I do and what I've done and what has been solid as a rock for me to keep me on track and just silence the chatter of voices trying to tell me whatever they want to tell me. If it's a, the spirit of doubt or the voice of doubt or defeat or fear, or whatever, where I can continue to walk victoriously and not hear any of those things and not get off track at all. And it's very simple because a lot of people know it. It's from Psalm 37 and keep us on the victorious life. So in Psalm 37, verse 3, there's a, there's a word and it's trust in the Lord and do good. Now I'm going to give you three things today, okay? Three things. The first one is trust. And uh, so I, I would get myself and I think there, I've got to do that. I've got to trust. And that's kind of obvious, like, of course, I need to trust in the Lord. But when you hear all three put together, you'll see, I need to do all three of these, and it'll keep me rock solid, uh, victorious, and not let me get off and start being fearful or doubting or anything like that. And I'll stay victorious if I'll do these three things. Now, here's the deal, though, that the people mess up on. I know, because I've, I've been through this myself and walked this out. It doesn't just say trust God, because people go, okay, I'll, I'll have faith in God, trust God. And trust means confidence, of course. That's a good word. There's a lot of words for it, but I like that one. Having confidence in God. But it doesn't say just have confidence. Okay, I'm going to try to have confidence. No, you got to demonstrate your confidence. And so it says, trust in the Lord and do good. In other words, trust and do something. Trust, show your trust by doing something good. And that's very important because what you're going to do is you're going to take your mind off of your problem and do something good that shows you're trusting God for your problem. I trust you, God, for my problem, and I'm going to go do something good that shows I'm taking my mind off of it. I'm taking my emotions off of it. So it's, it's really good to do that. Trust in the Lord and go do something. Now, I'm telling you how to stay victorious, how to live the victorious life, how to not falter and stay winning all the time. And uh, there'll be problems. There'll be stuff. I, I, uh, you know, I, I quoted the scripture the other day and said, no weapon formed against you or me shall prosper. That doesn't mean there won't be weapons. That doesn't mean there won't be them. They'll, they'll not form against you. They will, but they'll not prosper if you'll follow this. Okay, so trust in the Lord. Get your confidence in God, but show your confidence. Go do something good. Get your mind off the problem and show your mind. Show your trust by getting off the problem and doing something good. And then the next line uh, after that says, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Um, that's, a, that's kind of a promise from God, like you think, okay, God's going to help me to feel safe. But it's better than that for me. I like it this way. This is what I do. Trust in the Lord, go do something good, get my mind off the problem, and then pasture myself, pasture myself in my own mind, and just do it, do it in your own mind. You, you know what it means to do that. You've seen an old cow or a goat, something out in the pasture. See that old cow out in there? What are they doing? Just standing there chewing and eating and chewing and chewing and eating. 
and eaten and chewing. They don't look like they got a care in the world. You don't have any idea what they're thinking about. They have pa- they're pastured. And so I think of myself, trust in the Lord. Do something good to show my minds off of it. And then pasture myself and just, I'm pastured. I'm just going to chew on God's word and stay calm. Just keep, keep steady. Don't get off. Don't get distracted. I'm going to pasture myself. Trust. And so I, I do that and I find out trust cures worry. Trust cures worry. All right. Well, the second one then is, it says, trust in the Lord, do good. The second one is verse four. Take delight. Take delight in the Lord. Take delight. And that's a hard one for me because I don't use the word delight very often. I try to think, what is delight? So I, I uh, uh, looked at it and, uh, and, and I thought, what can I, what can I say about delight? Well, ex- I did this. Expect, I put it on the paper here. Expect happiness. Expect happy, happiness. Expect contentment. Expect joy from him. So take delight in him means I'm going to expect from him happiness and and contentment and delight and joy. And I'm going to start redirecting my emotions towards him rather than towards me. Because that's the natural thing is the, the first thing you do is you direct your emotions towards yourself, right? That's just the natural human being does that. So I'm going to take delight in him. I'm going to start directing my emotions and my thoughts towards God. Towards Jesus, however you want to say it, I'm going to direct him and I'm going to start expecting happiness, contentment, and joy to come back because I'm going to take delight in him and in the Lord. And so I'm going to direct, direct it, expecting a return on it and redirect my emotions towards God. And that's the best I could do, taking delight, because how, how do you do that? I'm going to direct myself, my delight in him, all right? And then it says with the promise, he will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, oh, do you see how that worked? Delight in the Lord. So I'm going to take my desires and I'm going to direct them towards him now. I'm going to put some emotion. I'm going to put some direct into him, put, 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 put on purpose, you know, on purpose, directing towards him, my delight in him, my desire in him. And then it says what? Then he will give me the desires of my heart. Isn't that great? Just putting my desire on him and he gives it to me. Now, I, I got around some religious people years ago and they didn't like that because they thought, oh, that's not right because now you're saying God's going to give you your desires and that's, you know, God doesn't give you the stuff you want and stuff like that. So they twisted it and said, no, that means God will put the right desire in you. Maybe that's what some people believe it is, but I just take it for what it says. They say he, if you delight in him, then he'll put the correct desire inside you. The desire, he'll put the right desires in you. And I just, did, I just keep it simple, right? Put delight in the Lord and he's going to give you the desires of your heart because you're setting your desires on him and he's going to reward you with the things that you desire in your heart. Then the third one, and these are going to keep you victorious, the third one is commit your way uh, to the Lord. Commit your way. And so I looked up the word commit, and none of them got me. They were just words. That just, I thought, no, 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 it just doesn't work for me. Just not good words, commit. And then I got down kind of to the end of running all these words to try to figure out what commit words fit for this lesson. And I finally got one, and it said, go for broke. Go, commit means go for broke. Just everything, you know, that's the way it is. Go for broke. And I thought, now that one fits. That one fits for me. Because uh, when we opened that country church, you know, Kathy and I were helping another church just as helpers. So we, it, wasn't, it was just uh, wasn't a commitment because we just did it when we were in town and did it while we sought God. What do we do with our lives? And that church would give each of us $100 a week when we were there. If we wanted to go minister someplace else, we could. But if we showed up at that church and ministered and helped in the church service on Sunday morning, the pastor would give Kathy $100 and me $100. And we, so we each make $100. Then we got offered a jobs in, in Chicago at a beautiful big church. And guess what happened? Now they offered us $1,000 a week. So we went from $100 to $1,000 a week. Whoa, that's a pretty good jump for us, wasn't it? But then God directed us back to that country church that was empty. 
had no people, been locked up for four years. And God said, when I asked him what he would do, he said, I'd raise the dead. If it were me, I'd raise the dead. And I thought, well, here's a dead church locked up. Then I said, well, that's probably what you'd do, isn't it? Yep. So we went from $100 a week to $1,000 a week offer, turned it down, and now we are at $0 a week. No money. We were out of money. And there's nobody in that church going to pay us. They only had six members. And they said, don't worry, they won't come. And so we had nothing. It was locked up. It had no money, no people. And we had no money. What do you do? We went for broke. We committed our way, though. We said, we'll do this. We're not going to go get other jobs. I'm not going to go sell shoes. And Kathy's not going to pump gas down at the Casey's or something. We're going for this. This is you. If this is your will, we're going to go for it. So we went for broke. And, of course, it... Took some years to build up a good church, and pretty soon, years later, revival broke out, and people were lining up to get into that church. Yep, lining up clear around the building. People came from all over the world to get in that little church. God raised it from the dead. And so it says, commit your way to the Lord, and it says, trust in him, and he will do this for you. And it says, it says he will make your righteousness reward shine like the dawn and your vindication like the noonday. And that basically means what he's going to do for you, if you commit your way to the Lord, he's just going to remove the clouds from your life. And the clouds from your I give you sunshine, a clear sunshine. He's going to clear the clouds. The sun is going to shine like the dawn or like the noonday. The sun is going to shine. Just the clouds are gone, the cloudiness on your eyes, the cloudiness in your mind, all the things you've been worrying about about and trying to how you're going to get your life together all that goes away if you'll do these three things and these are the three things I've done over and over and over when it gets to be too big or not know what to do say okay let me get my head on straight here first of all I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to do something good to get my eyes off the problem and on to doing something good to show my trust I'm going to take delight in the Lord and I'm going to put my delight on him, my emotions on him, and he's going to see what's going on, and he's going to give me the delight, uh, the desires of my heart. And then I'm going to go for broke. I'm going to commit my way to him, no matter what my circumstances, no matter what the situation is, I'm going to commit my way to him fully. And all of a sudden, when you do that, it just seems like... The clouds of your mind, the cloud over your brain, the cloud on your eyes, the cloud thinking through, just clear up and you think clear. So you, you trust, you delight, and you commit. And that will give you the victorious life. Did you get that today? I hope so. Till next time, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. Push the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and spread the word on social media. For more episodes and resources, go to reviveusnowpodcast.com. Until next time, keep on running for revival.